Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to forage for your small animals. In a lot of my recent videos, I've touched on the subject of feeding your animals a natural diet and going out and collecting things for yourself, but I've never actually gone into detail of how to identify these individual plants and how to collect things. So that is the subject of today's video and I'm going to be covering all aspects of how to identify it, how to just go on forage, where it's safe to go on forage and all these common things which I get asked. I'm going to hopefully answer all those in this video. There are some obviously basic rules or principles you may want to follow. So the places I would say to avoid if possible is um, roadside verges like there will be quite a lot of pollution on busy roads. It's okay to pick from quieter roads but certainly busier roads you may want to avoid due to all the exhaust fumes. Second is where you think dogs may have done a lot of you know urinating on the plants and stuff like that and just generally doing their waste and a good way to avoid this though is selecting plants from further back or up in the hedges stuff like that but certainly um, along common footpaths and stuff you've got to be careful with that farmers fields and stuff it's probably just best not to pick from there anyway because you don't want to be getting in trouble for you know something like that <laughs> so yeah those are the places i would say that i commonly try and avoid so now we've gone through the places you can pick from, it's good to look at where actually it's safe to collect from. So some common places which I find are good to pick from are places like woodlands, footpaths which aren't commonly used by many dogs and stuff because we tend to take our dog to a lot of footpaths and rarely see other dog owners and you know just generally through woodland type areas and I wouldn't get too paranoid about it though because you know as long as it's rained plenty you know in the recent weeks or so then you should be okay. My tip number two is to get a forage identifying guide or you know something like a manual one get it on your phone or on the computer and what you can do in the beginning is take little um, bits of plants and bring them home to identify. So in this next part of the video I'm going to be showing you how to identify 10 common forage plants which are pretty easy to identify and hopefully this video is going to help you become more familiar with these plants and maybe you'll give it a try yourself and go out and collect some plants for your animals. So one thing I you know really wanted to come across in this video is that there aren't just dandelion leaves to pick. A lot of people think there isn't very much you can collect for your animals and they only feel comfortable collecting dandelion leaves but this video will hopefully show you that there's so much more available and a lot more variety. So just before we get going I also wanted to say try not to completely take loads of plants from one area and still keep in mind you know the wildlife and everything in this video you may see a few clips of us taking quite a lot of branches and stuff like that we tend to get different plants from a variety of places rather than completely foraging the whole lot of one area but there are some places we were a bit more generous with what we collected just because we know the places that are just going to get trimmed back and you know they're just going to get cut back with machinery etc so that's the only reason you know we took a lot of branches and stuff fetch is actually quite a common plant but a lot of people don't really know much about it or where to find it so this sort of plant is mainly found like the colour purple but there are different varieties another one is a yellow variety so this plant is often found in grassland and hedges alongside other plants the purple flowers or the yellow flowers of this plant generally appear between sort of may time up to august and this plant is a member of the pea family so the seeds come in little pods the leaves are also symmetrical So this next plant is probably one that can be quite confusing for a lot of people and this is cow parsley. It does have a similar look to a toxic plant called hemlock so really do your research before picking this. Now 
some quick ways to identify it is number one the leaves of hemlock are much darker and they tend to have more of a sort of glossy finish another way to identify it is by looking at the stems the stems of hemlock are just more rounded whereas cow parsley has more ridges a bit like celery and one of the most easiest ways to identify it is that both can have sort of a red sort of appearance on the stem but hemlock has blotches of red as though someone's just taken a paintbrush and splattered it Here we have some plantain, you get two varieties and this is like a wide leaf one and you also get like a thinner leaf so I'm just going to take some of this if I can actually pull it out and it also has them bits on top, them flowery bits that's kind of how I identify it This is what the other variety of plantain looks like. You can see the leaves are much thinner, like that. Here's some bramble you can see there and it has like these white flowers on it. That's what the flowers look like. Brambles are a really common plant, especially in woodlands and hedges. Really easy to identify, especially when the blackberries are present. An easy way to get this off the plant without hurting your fingers is obviously to use gloves or another way is to fold it up aside and then pull. It's best collected using gloves though. There isn't really much to say about clover, it's very very easy to identify and I'm pretty sure most people know what this looks like. One thing I will say about clover is you should introduce it really slowly to the diet as it can cause gassing. You can tell that it's a hazel tree by the nuts on it so they're kind of just white coloured like that and also you have to look at the shape of the leaves so they're sort of pointed but then kind of jaggedy around the edges they've also got quite a furry texture we found another hazel tree and you can actually see the nuts up close on the tree so just look out for those and also remember to take them off if you feed them to your guinea pigs or rabbits So sticky weed has various different names including goosegrass and cleavers so obviously it's going to be pretty clear that this is sticky to the touch and it's often found in hedges alongside other plants. The weed is really abundant during springtime up until early summer time so that's the best time to go and collect it. You can tell what it is by looking at the actual apples themselves so that's the best way to identify it. The leaves are obviously are quite different to hazel, they are more shiny and smooth and they are quite a similar shape but they are very smooth and like I say the best way to recognise it is by looking at all these apples because you can see they're pretty much everywhere.
Yarrow is commonly found in grassy areas. The leaves are really feathery and this is what makes it very distinctive from cow parsley and other similar looking plants. The flowers of yarrow are a sort of cream colour and sometimes pale pink um, sort of in clusters. And last but not least we have sow thistle. Sow thistle does look very similar to dandelions and at first glance you may think it is a dandelion. However, if you look closer there are some things which will distinguish it from the dandelion flower because many people will confuse the two. And one thing to remember is that dandelions only have one single flower per each stalk whereas this is where sow thistle is different because the leaves actually grow all the way up the stalk. Sow thistles are also generally like a lot taller than dandelions. They can even grow up to like 100 centimeters so they can be pretty tall. So thank you for watching this video, I really hope it may have helped some of you guys and be sure to ask me any questions if you really aren't sure about anything or you know you just want some guidance or anything, I'm really happy to help and I do hope to make more of these in the future because there's so many plants available, this is just simply 10 common plants and I really hope to expand this in future and show you loads more different plants which are available because there's so many.